We're in an era in games where we haven't had many superhero titles that turn up the dial on violence and gore. This takes us to The Punisher. Now I know what you're thinking, The Punisher isn't a superhero. And you're right, he's not. But since he's more in line with an anti-hero, I thought it would be a good idea to play the Punisher game that released on the PS2 from 2005. Now this game was based on both the 2004 movie starring Thomas Jane and the comics, creating a fresh experience. Going into this game, I expected your typical run-of-the-mill superhero title with you killing some bad guys and saving some people. Instead, what I got was a brutal yet satisfying revenge story that was completely unexpected. The gameplay is the thing that makes the game unique from other superhero-like games. Playing as the Punisher, the main thing that Volition, the devs behind the game, needed to get right was the violence, and I think they succeeded in that aspect. When you start up a level, you play as Punisher from a third-person perspective. The enemies come from all sides, and around every corner there is someone waiting for you with some sort of weapon. To kill your enemies, you had a bunch of different tools at your disposal. Starting off with, you had tons of guns to choose from. When you first start, you're limited to what guns you can use, but as you get further in the story, you unlock more weapons to use in every level. Whatever gun you can think of, this game has it. You have pistols, revolvers, shotguns, machine guns, melee weapons, and throwables. Each of these serve a purpose and are useful against different types of enemies. To view all of these weapons, you can go to the main menu and then select Armory. Here, you can view all the weapons you unlocked along with a small description of what the gun is and what situations is best suited for. On the surface, this doesn't seem noteworthy, but trust me, it gets even better. The game is divided up by missions, and before starting each one, you have access to a mission briefing which tells you the objectives of the mission along with listing the location and default weapons. Chop shops are fronts for illegal activity of all kinds. I'm taking a particular interest in this one. The car that tried to run me over is registered to this shop. Where the armory comes into play is that in every mission briefing there's an option called change weapons and by clicking this it will take you straight to the armory and you can then change the weapons you enter the level with. This gives you the ability to craft a custom loadout that tailors to your preferred guns of choice. This mechanic is huge because if you're struggling in a level, then you can adjust the guns you're using to make the mission easier. When using these weapons, you could press R1 to shoot and a reticle would appear on screen, allowing you to spray tons of bullets into everyone. Shooting was very easy and depending on where you aimed your shot, you could completely shred people's limbs. If you aim at their heads, the heads pop off. Aim at their legs, the legs fly off. Arms, the arms are ripped from their body. You get the point. The violence shown by the weapons is exactly what you would expect to see from a Punisher game and the fact that it doesn't hold back on the gore makes it even better. Having gore in a Punisher game adds to the immersion and makes you feel like you really are the Punisher. Imagine someone making a Punisher game without blood and gore. It would make zero sense. I applaud Volition for making the game as violent as it needed to be because it made the game that much better. Regarding the actual combat, when not shooting you had some other options as well. You could run up on enemies and perform melee kills that were essentially automatic. As long as you got within range so the prompt could appear, it was pretty much an insta-kill. Littered across each area are melee weapons like knives, pipes, and other items that could be used to throw at pretty much anyone from any distance. Personally, I didn't use these much, but if they were lying on the table, I would grab them from time to time. What I did find devastating was the throwables, specifically the grenades and flashbangs. These could be found on the ground and could be added to your inventory right alongside your guns. Throwing these would cause massive damage or stun all enemies in the area and give you more than enough time to get some kills. If you get surrounded by enemies from all sides, I highly advise you to use these to create some distance so you're not constantly getting shot. To switch weapons, you could press the directional buttons which made weapon switching pretty much seamless. Since you're the Punisher, switching weapons at that speed made complete sense and helps the player adapt to unexpected events right in the moment. Underneath each gun, there's an orange meter that slowly goes down as you reload ammo. This can be replenished by taking the ammo from enemies that are carrying the same gun by simply walking over the dead body and picking it up. Even though you're the Punisher and it feels like you're invincible, you're really not, and at times, the game will remind you of that. If you try to run through every section, you're going to die a lot and be in for a long playthrough. Just as I described how Punisher's gameplay is, the enemies have a similar playstyle, making things a lot more interesting. The enemies can dive and shoot at you from anywhere in any area. 
they carry automatic and semi-automatic weapons that can cause a good amount of damage if you're not paying attention. Thankfully, you can avoid gunfire by diving in mid-air or pressing L2 and hiding behind cover. Implementing a way to avoid getting shot was crucial since there can be a lot of enemies in one area, making the whole situation chaotic. As far as enemy types, there's more than you might expect. Most of them are your typical henchmen, with all of them having subtle differences between gender, skin color, weight, etc. I thought the majority of the enemies were easy to deal with outside of the soldiers that looked like they were ripped right out of the commonwealth from the walking dead. These enemies had bulletproof armor that would only take damage if you used an LMG or a grenade. This forced you to aim for headshots, and to do that, you could press R3, which would allow you to zoom in on the enemy. Not only was zooming in useful for headshots, it was great for shooting enemies from a distance that you couldn't get to quickly. Easily, the most notable gameplay mechanic was the interrogation system. That, that hurts! Uh, wait! Give me a chance! I can help you! As you probably know, the Punisher is known for getting the information he wants from people of interest by any means necessary, and this game perfectly depicts that. During each level, there's enemies marked with a Punisher skull over their head, notifying you that they're available for interrogation. But this game takes it a step further by having white circles on the ground called special interrogations where you can drag the enemy into the area, interrogate them, and then have the option to brutally kill them. The location of these white circles changed throughout each mission alongside the kills. To properly perform the special interrogation, you needed to move the analog sticks back or forward and line up their fear level within a small bar, which you had to hold them there for 3 seconds until they break. Once the enemy cracks, you'll receive the information you're looking for, with the game then presenting you with the opportunity to kill them. Having the death animations change with each location keeps this mechanic fresh and prevents this from ever going stale. There is no greater satisfaction than clearing out a whole room of enemies except for one, only to torture that person in the most gruesome way imaginable. I know, it sounds sick and twisted, but trust me, this aspect of the gameplay is really fun. If there was one thing I didn't care for, it was how the enemies would appear from behind you after clearing an area. Most of the time when you enter a room, it's obvious what direction the enemies are coming from so you know exactly where to shoot, but sometimes the enemies will spawn from behind you after you already cleared an area. This could be because there was an enemy hiding in a nearby room that you didn't check, or if they never died, but if you're not aware of your surroundings, you'll wonder where these random shots are coming from. This isn't a big deal at all, but it can be annoying at times so be sure to fully clear out each area before moving on to the next so this isn't a persistent issue. In my opinion, the movement was a little stiff as well. I feel like if the controls were watered down just a little bit more, they could almost be considered tank controls. Unless I missed it, there isn't a sprint button either, so Punisher's jog is the fastest that you can go. This makes it harder to execute those melee attacks I mentioned earlier, since you take so many shots before finally reaching the enemy. You could dive out of the way from enemy gunfire, but even the dive itself is still relatively slow. The combat is already fast paced, but if you had the ability to sprint to and away from enemies, it would really help make the movement flow better. The movement isn't detrimental, just something that could have been improved on. To my surprise, there were boss fights that took place at various moments throughout the story. These weren't anything over the top, but they served as a nice change of pace from the endless killing of henchmen over and over during each level. I thought it was cool that the game didn't hold your hand during these fights and made you think about how to defeat the boss because it wasn't always obvious. Just like the normal enemies, the bosses die in brutal ways too, making the overall satisfaction from defeating the boss even greater. Lastly, the game had a unique point system that would increase as you killed enemies and performed certain actions over the course of a mission. These points are important because they would carry over into acquiring upgrades. Underneath the armory section in the main menu, you can click the Upgrades tab to increase a whole bunch of stats for the Punisher. This includes ammo capacity, armor, accuracy, and a lot more. Knowing these upgrades are available helped to motivate me through each level and make sure I played at my best, so then I could earn enough points to get more upgrades. If you're struggling to get through a mission, you can replay one that you've already completed to earn more points so you can get the upgrades you need that will help you progress. Overall, the gameplay for the Punisher is fantastic. For a PS2 game that had this level of detail surrounding the gore and violence is incredible. Outside of a few minor critiques, this gameplay is exactly what a Punisher game should be comprised of. 
On the other hand, the story for the Punisher is exactly what I expected. With the little knowledge I already had about this character prior to playing the game, I was confident it would start out with his family being killed, and that's exactly what it did. After that moment, the whole plot is centered around Frank's journey stopping crime and finding the person who killed his family. As you go from mission to mission, the story is slowly unraveled with you gaining more intel about the killer as you find each person of interest. I thought that the story was easy to follow as each cutscene explained what was going on thoroughly and you understand why Frank was going to all these different places. Similar to the old Spider-Man games, random Marvel characters make cameos throughout the story that helped add to the overall cast. I thought their placement within the story was great as their inclusion made sense and helped Frank during pivotal moments. There isn't a lot of twists and turns, but more of a slow build up to the end until it's revealed who the killer is. Because of this slow crawl to the climax, some may lose interest in what's going on and will want to go back to killing, but it's definitely worth trying to piece together what's really happening. By the end of this game, it seemed they wanted to leave this story in a place for a sequel, but unfortunately, that would never happen. This story is predictable and is exactly what you would expect a Punisher story to be, but because of that, it makes it that much more enjoyable. Not having to dissect a convoluted plot for a character seeking vengeance allowed me to focus more on the gameplay, which is the main attraction. In the end, the Punisher is just pure fun. Right from the start, the gameplay becomes addicting and makes it hard to stop playing. The gore and violence are on a whole other level from other hero-like games, adding a layer of realism to a character that most definitely required it. For those reasons, I'm going to give this game a 9. Outside of a couple small criticisms, this game is absolutely incredible. Playing this 18 years later, I hope that we get another Punisher game because a AAA version of this could be mind-blowing. If Naughty Dog, Rockstar, or another dev that could do the gore right got their hands on this character, I'm sure we could see something special. But for now, we'll just have to enjoy this amazing gem of a game. What did you think about the Punisher? Did you play this game as a kid? Let me know in the comment section below, and if you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like or subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>